Hello everyone, and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. In today's video, we'll be covering a novel new technique for creating your very own 3D prints using 2D printing technology. In this example, we'll be modeling a cube, and with over five faces and nearly 12 edges, the cube is known for being one of the more difficult to create shapes in SOLIDWORKS. So we're going to begin today's video with a quick tutorial on the cube design process, and then follow that up with all the steps you'll need to go from this to this. Let's get started. So of course we've sped this footage up to make the process a little bit faster for video format, but you can see here that we're actually beginning with an assembly, as cubes are typically assembled. I want to start off with some primary geometry, so we're beginning with the profile of a circle. This is actually being used as construction geometry to create an arc, like you've seen here. This will allow us to follow this up with a revolve shape once we, once we have the dimensions in place. So you can see the revolve happening here. We're going to do a quarter of that and then pattern it with a circular pattern. Just after that comes the first cut. We're creating an offset plane at a quarter inch. and We're going to follow that up with a rectangular cut extrude. So you can see we've removed some material and, and removed that first face to flatten it out. The second face is going to be trimmed up using a surface cut command. So the circular surface was created to create that first cut. And then we're going to copy and rotate that surface in order to create our third cut. And again, this is all just in an, a, an attempt to make this design process as quick as possible. Here you can see we have a spline coming into play. We're going to straighten out all of those points with vertical relations so that we can get the proper uh, line format. Make sure that that's dimensioned properly. And then just follow that up with a simple extruded cut for our fourth flat face. Here I'm using an alternative technique. This is just one that you can throw in there if you'd like. Uh, and this is going to be a separate body, actually. And what we're going to do here is use the Boolean subtraction technique to remove that uh, rectangular extrude from the model. We're going to delete the final curved face here, following that up with a 3D sketch. Um, there's a couple different techniques you could use here, but probably the easiest would be the boundary surface. You can see that in action here using the uh, left and right side as our profiles, and then the upper and lower as guide curves. I'm going to extend that new surface so that we can use it as a surface trim tool. And this will actually allow us to remove all the pieces that we don't want. And optionally, there's a create solid option that's used here, giving us the main portion of our cube geometry. Finally, we're going to follow that up with a square sketch, which can be used as a, an extruded cut, extruded through in uh, both directions, and then just removing the outside of that to create the uh, final cube geometry. So a quick measurement confirms our results, and we're ready to create our primary views. So moving over into a Word document, I'm simply rotating to the proper view, screenshotting it, and getting each of those views into that Word document so that we can leverage those in creating our 3D model. Uh, once this is done and we got all of our views into the Word document, we're going to go ahead and print them. I'm just going to create a few more copies here. And once those are ready to go and printed, we can start on the 3D modeling process. So let's go take a look at that now. Here you can see I've got the primary views printed out. Again, that's your front, right, top, and uh, corresponding left, back, and bottom views. And the key here, uh, because remember, we're using 2D technology for this, uh, you want to make sure that you get your cuts as even as possible. So you really need to take great care when you get to this stage to cut out all of these views. Now the next step here as you can see is the folding process again just like cutting you want to be reasonably precise here. So take your time and create the folds uh, and there's a, there's several different ways to do this but I like to do the four sides first and then add the top and the bottom so we're using a piece of tape just to make sure that these will stick together properly. And then we're going to repeat this process with both the top and the bottom as well. And that's ultimately going to give us our formed cube, but we're not quite finished yet. Now the next step is going to be very critical for us because in order to properly center this model, we need to make sure that we plasticize it. So I've got some plasticizer and you can find this anywhere. In fact, I got this at, at Walmart. Uh, it's sold all over the place, but uh, we start off by making sure that all the seams in our model are covered. You don't want this to have, and it needs to be an airtight model, you don't want to have any holes in the model. So we're going to start off by adding some of the plasticizer to the seams, 
And this is what's going to allow the sintering process to take place. If you don't do this, uh, the, the paper model that, we're, that we have here is actually going to burn in the sintering device. So we'll make sure to get all of those seams. And then I prefer to add just a little bit extra. You can never really have too much, to be quite honest. So don't worry about using too much. Too little is much worse than too much. Once you've achieved adequate coverage of all the surfaces of your paper model, we're ready to move on to the sintering process. So here you can see the laser sintering device. You're just going to go ahead and open this up. Make sure that you have some sort of tray. In this case, I'm using a paper plate. Uh, that works just fine. You're going to want to center for at least 80 minutes. That's definitely a bare minimum. Um, I've seen some models go upwards of two hours as part of the sintering process. But as soon as that's done, just go ahead and pop open the sintering device. And there you have your finished 3D printed cube. So it really is just that simple. There's not much to it. And I uh, hope you enjoy this process. In today's video, we covered a new technique for creating 3D prints using 2D printing technology, and also showed how solders can take your most complex designs, like the cube seen in today's video, and make your dreams a reality. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe, and don't forget to visit us at HawkridgeSys.com for more instructional videos and training opportunities. From all of us here at Hawkridge Systems, happy April.